Hey guys, this is Eric and today I'm gonna be sharing some bottoming tips that help me have a better experience while bottoming and maybe they will help you too or if you haven't tried that it will inspire you to try bottoming for the first time so here we go. Tip number one, getting plenty of fiber. It sounds really crazy but having a balanced diet it's actually really important to bottom since douching it's very important and if you don't have enough fiber your movements are gonna be a little bit slow it's gonna be very dry and douching will be a nightmare so in order for you to have a better faster douching experience i believe you should have enough fiber so if you're doing keto or low carb or a diet that's low in fiber you can always add a supplement the best fiber supplement i found it's called Cillian husks and you're gonna love it. It just makes everything so much easier. It makes going really really easy and faster and it works by adding bulk to your stool and attracting water into that area so you go even in a softer way. So I strongly recommend it and I think this is my power tip number one. Do not underestimate a great fiber supplement. Some other fiber supplements I've tried and they didn't do much for me, but this made a huge difference. Tip number two, douching. We already established that you need to douche before bottoming, so it's very important that you have the correct equipment for the type of douching that you want to have. Some people do something called deep douching, and some people do something called superficial douching. And it depends on the size in this particular scenario. So what I would tell you is, don't get a water bottle, okay? A douching device, you can get them on Amazon. The bulb is just $10. You can get the shower douching equipment and you can also get an enema bag. So these are the most used. I would recommend not using the water bottle because that can irritate your anal area and that's not good at all. I strongly recommend getting the douching bowl because you can do almost everything with it. And if you're getting a shower douche, make sure that it's made out of a stainless steel because some of them can rust and also that it has a pressure valve. Otherwise, you are potentially going to hurt yourself with the pressure of the water. The process of douching, it's fairly simple. You put water in, you let the water out, you repeat this process and when the water comes out clean, you stop. It's just that. Now, here's the trick. Sometimes some residual water will be inside of you and this can cause a big mess while you're bottoming so the trick is to get that residual water out. One way to make sure that you push this extra water out is to get an 8 to 9 inch toy, something that will touch your second hole somehow and you just put it in after you douche and you make sure that you are releasing that extra water. Sometimes this can trigger a movement and that's a good thing because if it happens, it means you were not really done with your douching. This will eliminate that issue that you said that you were clean, the water came out clean and then all of a sudden when you are in the middle of the action, you were not. So do something called a triple check. Repeat this process with your toy three times. If the water keeps coming out clean, then you're definitely clean. Tip number three for grooming and hygiene. If you are going to be a hairy bottom, you can skip this one, but if you're interested in having a smooth, silky butt, then stop shaving. I will tell you to stop shaving altogether, stop using razors in your butt. Usually razors can cause a lot of sensitivity, they cause ingrown hairs, they cause razor bumps. They do havoc on me so i never shave that area the only area i shave is my penis because that area magically doesn't get ingrown hair but i would never recommend shaving your butt instead what you need to do is use a hair trimmer so when you're using a hair trimmer you can use them weekly and there's no ingrown hair there's no irritation it's just magic so Consider getting a Remington trimmer, it's just $20 and as long as you're careful and you're using a mirror so that you don't clip yourself, hello, um, you're gonna be fine and 
you're gonna have like a smooth bod and you don't have to be shaving. It looks just as smooth. The next thing when it comes to hygiene sounds like common sense, but for some people it isn't. And it is the order of showering. First you douche and then you shower. Some people get this wrong and they shower and then they douche. Whenever you do this, all the smells remain in your butt area. If you have a smelly butt, your top will not want to renew. This is really important. So another thing that people fail to do is how to correctly remove all of your butt others. So a common mistake that people do when showering is that they put the soap in a loofah, in a brush or in a sponge, and then they start, you know, scrubbing their entire body and they think that by scrubbing their butts and, you know, scrubbing really hard and doing everything really well, you have removed these others. And chances are, you didn't. Even though you scrub your sponge or your brush, soap in its most concentrated form needs to touch your butt crack, your armpits, and your groin area. Make sure you do this because the thing is that when you put soap only on the loofah or on the brush, and you're putting it all over your body, by the time that you get to your butt crack, the soap has already been diluted. And in order for soap to effectively remove others from your body, it needs to be in its most concentrated form. Tip number four, lubrication and protection. Most lubes come as water-based, oil-based, or silicon-based. I would tell you to stay away from water-based lubes because they usually contain preservatives that are highly irritant. Some of these ingredients are methyl paraben and propyl paraben. You can read them in your lube bottle. In my particular case, I am very sensitive to these ingredients and at the beginning, when I was using water-based lubes, I would feel this burning sensation whenever I was at that initial insertion and I was like, this is burning or this is stinging, I don't know why. And it is because I'm actually sensitive to these ingredients. A lot of people that I know had similar reactions. Stay away from water-based lubes in that area. On the other hand, silicon-based lubes have a higher performance when it comes to lubrication and they don't cause all these sensitive issues in the body. The only downside with silicon-based lubes is that you cannot use them with silicon-based toys. If you try to use a silicone lube with a silicone toy, it will destroy it. It will damage it and also if you are putting your silicone lube to your silicone bulb it will erode it and it will start having some like little specks inside of it so i would recommend having oil based lubes as an alternative so my favorite type of lube is oil based to be precise is coconut oil cold press that's my favorite lube it's organic it's something that you can eat it's something that is you can put it in your body, it's moisturizing, it's easy to remove from the body or the cheats, and it's very safe for your body. You know, it has a lower performance than silicone, but you can still use it with your toys, with people. The only problem that oil-based lubes have is that you cannot use them with condoms. So if you're going to be using protection, I would recommend using silicone-based lubes because oil-based lubes tend to destroy condoms and it's easier for them to break. Be mindful on the type of activity and exploration that you're going to be having in your anal area so that you can choose the best lube for yourself, whether it's you're going to be playing with toys or you're going to be playing with someone. But the only thing that I would recommend against is never, under any circumstances, let someone use saliva as lube. This is just not enough. Unless you are a super power bottom, you should never use saliva as lube because for most people, this is not enough lubrication. This is the easiest way to get an anal injury. Chances are you can get a fissure or worse. And whenever you get an injury in your anal area, it's extremely painful and it will take you a very large amount of time to heal. So make sure you never use just saliva as lube because this can lead to injury. Tip number five, 
bottom exploration and dilation. I feel like a lot of people feel like they're ready to have anal sex, but they've never had any type of exploration. If that is your case, you're not ready. You need to have some type of exploration before you do anal sex. Otherwise, you're going to have a nightmare experience. It's going to be super traumatic and you're going to be in a lot of pain. I met a lot of friends that are only tops today and it is because their experience was traumatic. They expected it to be this magical thing or this very enjoyable thing. But the thing is that it cannot be enjoyable if you don't know what you're doing and if you're doing the wrong thing. So your ass has three modes. One of them is closed, open, and relaxed. So I feel like a lot of people don't know that their ass can do these things. And another thing, you need to be able to control this with your mind. If you don't control this with your mind, you're not going to have an enjoyable anal experience. So, for example, when you're contracting, that's when you're closing. If you are closing your ass, everything that tries to come in contact with you will hurt you. It will be extremely painful. You're not supposed to be contracting when you are having anal sex. So, you're supposed to either be relaxed, which is your anus without any type of tightness so that you can sort of go in and explore the area or you need to be on open. Open feels like pushing sort of and sometimes you need to be on pushing so that you can start getting more relaxed and things enter easily when you are in this open state which is sort of like pushing. So I feel like in order for you to understand what I'm saying you need to explore yourself. You need to get a toy. You need to use your fingers and you need to start getting familiar with these feelings because anal sex can only be enjoyable if you are on open, which is like pushing, or relax, which is like staying there without any tightness. So make sure that you have exploration sessions before experiencing anal sex for the first time. Otherwise, you will not enjoy it and a reflex is that most people will contract and if you're contracting and something is entering you will be in a lot of pain my friend the next thing is dilation and a lot of people don't think about it your ass it's flexible and sometimes it could be on a flexible stage meaning that week you were exploring yourself and stuff like that or it's been a month, two months, a year that you haven't done anything in that area and now you are suddenly super tight and you need to be dilated slightly. So one thing that I would recommend people is to dilate before anal sex. It will help tremendously. And another thing is that dilation, it's what causes anal sex to be completely pain free. Yes, you heard this. If you are having some type of pain, with your anal sex is because you are not dilated enough. Anal sex shouldn't be painful. If you are having pain, you're not dilated enough. Hear this one, okay? So one thing that I would recommend people to do is to get a progressive butt plug set. You know, they usually come in levels, like level one, level two, and level three, and it's usually a set of butt plugs that are different sizes. Size number one, it's like the smallest, you put it in, you put a thong, and before your top comes, let's say that you're organizing your house and making everything tidy, and then you go 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you switch it up, go to level two, so that you can be more dilated, and then you start organizing, you send some tags, you do whatever you wanna do, get your tongue on, and then get the level three, so that you can, the level three is kinda like something bigger, but the thing is that you will be dilated. By the time that your top comes, you are going to be properly dilated, your ass is relaxed, it's expanded and flexible, and you're not going to be feeling pain if the top goes too fast on you. So that is something that a lot of people don't think, so getting progressive butt plugs really helps a lot. Another thing is that let's say that you are taking a very large member, right? So if you're going to be taking something super big and you are afraid that it's going to touch your second hole 
and it's gonna be really either painful or jerky. Some people, when they get to that section of the second hole, if it touches you, you try to jump, you know, and you feel like, oh my God, this is too much. Like, you're not used to this feeling. Another thing is that you can get a large butt plug. A square peg specifically makes this super large butt plug that is over nine inches. So it definitely will cross that second hole area and it will leave it open so that you can get familiar with this feeling in your brain. So when the top comes and he goes beyond your second hole, if it's someone that has nine inches or above, you're not gonna feel this jerky feeling because now you are used to this feeling and it feels just like a massage. Remember, anal sex should feel like this gentle massage that something is inside of you and it's just making you feel really good. So the large butt plug, it's a really good trick. Try it. You are gonna be mind blown. You'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe no one ever said this. No one ever told me this trick. And this is something that really, really helps. Like if you get a large butt plug so that you can get used to that second hole feeling when you are getting impaled, you are not gonna be prompted to jump or to stay away. So I feel like this is really important and I feel like this is my most helpful trick so far. So I hope these tricks have helped you in any way, shape or form. And I hope you feel more confident in going into your bottoming sessions. I'm gonna try to make uh, top tips, I guess, for the next video. And I wanna hear in the comments down below if you have any helpful tips for the community on how they can bottom better, just leave them down below. And remember to subscribe, like, and until I see you next time, try to get on a bottoming adventure. Goodbye.